The benefits of spending time in nature are astounding. There are physical and mental health benefits. Spending time in nature is therapeutic. Uh, there's benefits to the surrounding community and to the ecology itself. But today I want to focus on the intellectual benefits of spending time in nature, because nature truly is a classroom. Nature can be used to teach just about every topic, uh, mostly science, so physics, chemistry, biology, geology, ecology, environmental science, all these things are perfect to teach in nature. Mathematics as well, because nature is mathematics. Uh, but you can also teach history and language arts and English. Uh, just by spending time reading a book outside or discussing a topic outside in the woods, kids will understand that information better. Nature is interactive, it's engaging, and most importantly, it's fun. By spending time in nature instead of in the classroom, kids are just much more engaged in what they're learning with. They, they enjoy spending time out in the fresh air, surrounded by plants and in the sunlight. And nature is a window into how everything works. By learning from nature, we can learn about every other system around us, whether it's economics, politics, science, mathematics, technology, all of these things we can gain insight into by learning with nature. So when I was a young lad, I, uh, I loved learning. I loved learning, but I, uh, but I hated school. <laughs> I, uh, I really did not like school. And so I got into a habit early on of, um, of faking illness. Uh, so in the morning, I would, I would fake a cough, and I would tell my mom, oh, I'm not feeling well, Mom. And, uh, and she was a public school teacher as well, so she, uh, and she knew how much I hated school, so she would play into it, uh, and, she would, and she would believe me, and she would say, all right, you can stay home today. And so she would go off, off to her job at the public school, and, uh, and once she was gone, I would make sure the coast was clear, and then I would go outside, usually barefoot, and, uh, and go down the street to Monticello Park, which was the local forest. And I would spend all day in the forest, uh, seeing how close I could get to squirrels, playing with sticks and stones, uh, breaking, breaking sticks off of trees and trying to make bows and arrows. Uh, and my favorite thing was to build dams. There was a stream through this forest, and I would build dams. I would see how high I could build the dam. And then when I had built the dam up to a certain point and the, and the stream had filled up, I would pull out rocks one at a time and see it all come crashing down. And it was so much fun to me, and it was a learning experience, and, and it was way better than school. Um, and one thing I learned from that is that nature is a damn good environment for learning. <laughs> but it would have been so much better for my education if I had a teacher there with me, if I had a mentor there with me in the woods, helping me through all this and helping me connect the things I was learning in school with the things I was learning in nature. So let's look at, at this lake. Here I am, uh, here I am fishing. And if I, had a, if I had a teacher here with me, there are so many things I could learn just from being around this lake. For instance, there's a whole intro to high school physics here with the elasticity of the rod and the momentum and the inertia of the fly. There's biology in how the fish behave and how they interact with the flies and the other animals in this ecosystem. There's chemistry. How interesting would it be to take a pH test of the lake and then take the pH of the stream that was feeding into the lake and questioning why are those pHs different. There's mathematics here. Think about the probability and statistics of actually catching a fish. So much to learn there, and way more interesting. <laughs> I could even read a book. You know, I could read Walden by this. We could learn about history, the history of the Algonquin tribes that were living in this region, how they lived and how they, how they survived off the land. There's so much that I could have learned through this lake if I had a teacher there. And Albert Einstein understood this. He said, look deeper into nature, and you will understand everything better. And I realized this, uh, I realized that this was true sort of independently of Albert Einstein uh, while I was studying aerospace engineering at MIT. But it wasn't at MIT that I realized this, it was while I was out of MIT, studying on a farm. So I worked on a farm for a summer in West Virginia, and, uh, and I spent every day outside, 10 hours a day outside in the woods, in the fields, down by the river, and while I was Outside, I was starting to see the things I was learning in school, the aerodynamics, the thermodynamics, the structural mechanics. I was starting to see that in the natural systems around me. I was seeing eddies and, and pressure differences and vortices in the stream that I was learning in aerodynamics. I was seeing thermodynamics come alive in the brush fires we were setting from all the brush we had collected from prunings. 
I was seeing structural mechanics as I was pruning trees and, and berry bushes. Uh, Young's modulus was truly coming to life for me. So I realized during this experience uh, over the summer working on this farm that nature could, could be such an incredible learning tool to help us integrate the things that we were learning in school. And so this brings me to systems thinking, because this is a really interesting concept. Uh, there's this, this idea that if we can really understand one system, say uh, a mechanical system, then we can start to apply the concepts that make that mechanical system work to another system, say an electrical system. So you can look at how a house is plumbed, like water plumbing, and you can compare that directly to an electrical circuit. And so there's all these systems, political systems, economic systems, social systems, uh, and natural systems that all operate using the same base principles of energy flows, of inertia, momentum, of balance and imbalance, of overshoot and undershoot. Every system works using the same underlying principles. And nature works the same way. And ecosystems are incredibly complex systems that we evolved to understand. We literally were, for hundreds of thousands of years, our, the system we were interacting with was the natural system. So we, it's built into our genetics to really understand how these systems work. So by spending time in nature, we can start to develop systems thinking and apply these systems, natural systems, to other systems that we're focused on, whether it be economic, political, or mechanical, structural, any system. We face complex problems, everything from climate collapse, ecological collapse, economic inequality, uh, migration, human migration, political instability. These are really complex problems that are part of complex systems. In order to solve them, we need complex systems, complex systems thinkers out there. And so what I propose is that we use nature to teach the next generation of systems thinkers, because this is the complex system that we evolved to understand. The current academic paradigm of desk sitting and test taking and hand raising doesn't work for a lot of kids. It sure didn't work for me. I was labeled learning disabled, but I always thought that was weird because I love learning, you know? Really, it was, I was school averse. I was academics averse. So this current academic paradigm doesn't work for a lot of kids, so we have to rethink how we're going to do this. And if we look to Einstein and spend time out in nature, we can shift to a natural learning paradigm. So how do we do this? Well, we all play a role. The uh, parents, the teachers, and the students, and, and the administrators are important too. So let's start with the parents. So the first thing you can do as parents is get your kids outside. Take them outside on the weekends, after school. Go with them outside or let them roam around by themselves. Find a nice park, a forest, a stream, a lake. Uh, just let them outside. And facilitate their natural instinct to explore and inquire. Don't get in the way too much. Let them really explore where they want to explore. And then ask them questions. You know, why does the seed stay in the air for so long? This girl is learning aerodynamics right here. Find a school that prioritizes natural learning. And there's a lot of them out there. Uh, Montessori is one of the, one of the core ones. Uh, Dr. Maria Montessori said, when children come in contact with nature, they reveal their strength. And that's built into the entire Montessori system. Waldorf as well. Rudolf Steiner, who spent a lot of time in nature studying agriculture and natural systems, he built this whole educational system based on this concept that our highest endeavor must be to develop free-thinking human beings who are able of themselves to impart purpose and direction in their lives. And he did this through nature. In Waldorf schools, the kids spend a lot of time in nature out in the garden. Then there's wilderness schools. Uh, for kids who are in private or public schools, this is a great way to get them in contact with nature in the summer. So there's a lot of wilderness schools where kids will spend, spend several weeks to several months out in the wilderness, hiking and camping and learning the entire way. This is great for older kids as well, as, you know, they have got a lot of hormones, a lot of energy, you know, need a lot of stimulation. Just get them outside, let them interact with nature over the course of the summer. For the younger kids, there's forest kindergarten. Uh, this is a really interesting model for, for early uh, education. It was based, uh, started in Germany and now is, is around the world, where, uh, where the kids spend pretty much every day, rain or shine, out in the woods. It's kindergarten, but it's 
in the woods, and they're sort of free-ranging. They'll sit down in, in circles like this and learn, and then they'll go out and explore. And there's even some uh, public schools that are really progressive, uh, like CS55 in Bronx, New York. Some of you may recognize Stephen Ritz, uh, who's a superhero teacher. He's teaching his kids uh, through nature with gardens. So he has gardens inside and outside. He's got aquariums inside as well. And he, his kids are interacting. They're growing their own food. They're interacting with plants and with the soil. And this is how they're getting in touch with nature in a place where there typically isn't a lot of nature in the middle of New York City. So how can the teachers get involved? And the administrators too. Well, bring the kids outside. Take field trips. Try and get outside once a week. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a place like this. You know, this would be a great field trip. But really, there's nature in between the cracks and the sidewalk. You know, it's a little bit smaller. You might need to bring magnifying glasses. But there's so much to learn here by observing the ants and the weeds and the different plants coming up through the cracks of the sidewalk. So really, nature is everywhere. We just need to, to get outside and start observing it. And here's an outdoor lesson plan that I learned, uh, I think it was through Boy Scouts or, or one of my early camps. And it basically, you have your kids go, out, go outside, have your kids find a spot in the woods, sort of separate from each other, sort of spread out, and sit down with a, a pencil and notebook. Have them quietly observe their surrounding environment and the ecology around them, and record what they see. Ask them to contemplate how the different things that they're observing are interacting with each other and how everything is connected. And then after a period of time, maybe it's 15 minutes, maybe it's 30 minutes, uh, come together and discuss the findings. Uh, what did people observe? Every kid's going to have observed something different. And this will start conversations that you can tie back into the curriculum. Um, there's always interesting conversations that arise out of this practice. It's also great for the teacher because it's some quiet time. For the teachers, you can start a school garden. This is all the rage these days. Lots of teachers and schools are starting school gardens. This is great for places where there isn't a, a beautiful forest next door because uh, a garden is basically a source of nature, and have the kids growing their own food, interacting with different plants, seeing the aphids and how their populations rise and fall, seeing the ladybugs come in and eat the aphids. There's so much to learn here about natural systems. Or if, if it's difficult to get outside or there's no space for an outdoor garden, teachers can bring nature inside. So this is a living ecosystem that I have in my living room. It's an aquaponic system, essentially, where there's an aquarium down below, and there's a garden up top. In the aquarium, I've got several different types of fish. Each one plays its own role, its own niche in the ecosystem. There's frogs in there. There's two or three different types of snails. There's shrimp and aquatic plants. And all of these animals, this, in, this ecosystem, is providing nutrients that get pumped up to the garden up top, which is filled with edible plants, uh, some that I found outside, some that I've planted from seeds, some that I've done, done through clonings. And there's so much that you can learn through one of these living ecosystems, and anyone can build this. One thing I've been working on is getting these ecosystems into schools. So this is Stephen Ritz's school, where we put an ecosystem in, and the kids love interacting with the aquarium. Every morning before the bell rings, there'll be kids sitting on the ground observing the fish and the snails and the shrimp and seeing how everything interacts. There are certain kids who love taking chemistry tests and monitoring and tracking how the pH and the nitrogen levels vary over time. And some kids really just love tasting the produce and trying to grow different things. There's so much in this one natural uh, or unnatural living ecosystem to learn. So this is an example of, of a natural system where there are different components interacting with each other. And this is really the simplest model where you have the fish food going in, the fish are feeding the microbes, the microbes are feeding the plants, plants are cleaning the water for the fish, and they're feeding the people as well, and all this is, is, is enabled by light and water. But it can get even more complex than this, and you can add in the snails and the shrimp and the algae, and all of a sudden kids are starting to understand this and see how things are circular in this system, and they're starting to think in systems. And a lot of these concepts here can, uh, can be taken to other systems that they're learning about in school. So how can the students get involved in this? Well, remember our quote from Einstein, look deeper into nature and you will understand everything better. The kids can take this to heart. Get outside, observe and interact. Try and identify patterns and parallels in the natural world and see and try and find metaphors to, 
the other worlds that you're interacting with and your other interests. I remember the quote from the uh, other white-haired, mustachioed man, Mark Twain, uh, don't let your schooling interfere with your education. If you feel like you're, you're not getting out of school, which you should be getting out of it, find other ways to learn, you know, to get out and explore things that you're interested in. Get outside. And I, I don't advocate skipping school, but if you're going to do that, if you have a class that's, that's not a, that you don't find productive, go read a book in the woods. It's very productive. Just don't get in trouble. So we can integrate nature-based learning into every student's education. Uh, there are lots of different strategies, but by combining all these strategies, we can get every kid out into nature, or at least bring nature to them. And through this, we can develop the next generation of systems thinkers. Because there was a point in time when nature was the classroom. This was how every kid learned. Every kid was out in nature with a mentor, with a teacher, and they were learning the entire time. But recently, we've really lost that connection in our schools. So let's bring nature back into our education. Thank you.